Praise the Lord, church. I think we can do a little better. Praise the Lord, church. I was telling Marky, I don't know what it is, but I feel like I can run laps around the church right now. Um, but I'm excited to be here tonight, excited to see what the Lord's going to do. If you can stand, we're going to go before him in prayer. Just ask that his presence would be here tonight and that he would have his way. God, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to come before you and to lift you up in this place, Lord God. Oh, we ask that you would be in this building, Lord God, that your presence would be evident in this place, Lord God, and that we wouldn't just be spectators, Lord God, but we would be participators and that we would respond to what we feel in this house tonight, Lord God, that we would worship you, that we would give you our all, Lord God, no matter what it is that we came in here carrying, Lord God, I pray that we would leave it at the door and that we would worship you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone said amen. You may be seated, but continue to worship with us. Remember Sister Blackford, uh, she's not feeling well at all. Uh, I believe it started earlier this afternoon, so they will not be here. I also remember Sister Niece, I think she's still trying to recover and uh, her body to be strengthened. So we're grateful she's here tonight, but we want the Lord to touch her. I also remember uh, Brother Rex, too, who's not feeling well. 
uh, also, I believe, uh, uh, I think there's a little something going around. So we want, we want the Lord to touch them and, and to protect us. Amen. Also, we want to remember the family of Melissa Ball. Uh, that's my cousin, uh, her husband, uh, Michael, unexpectedly lost his father. And it's a very difficult situation. So we want to remember uh, them tonight. Every special unspoken signified by an uplifted hand. So many needs, but let's go before God who's more than enough. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to come here tonight to gather as the body of Christ. Lord, I pray that our faith would arise in this place. Lord, we bring each and every need before you tonight with boldness and faith, believing that you will meet us here tonight, believing that you will hear every prayer. God, we may not know the details of every situation, but you know. I pray that healing virtue would begin to flow. God, to every person that's sick in body, I pray that you would move and minister. God, from the top of their head to the sole of their feet, we're asking this in the mighty name of Jesus with great expectation. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone said amen. Would you clap your hands one more time unto Jesus tonight? Amen, amen. You can be seated in Jesus' name as our ushers make their way tonight. We do want to remind you about corporate prayer on Tuesday at 6.30. Also, we do have our Hope House uh, Wednesday. I believe they're getting going around 4.30 for that. If you want to help out, please see uh, Sister Vonda regarding those details and our Truth Youth Life Group. We'll also be meeting on Thursday at 6 p.m. Let's ask the Lord to bless this offering. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to give. We pray that you would bless it, multiply it, help it to reach this lost world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now there's freedom in your 
let's clap our hands tonight and thank Him. Oh, thank the Lord, 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 thank the Lord. Somebody and tell them you're thankful for the goodness of God. Praise God, praise God. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll say it again. Amen. I, I get very uncomfortable in dead church. And I think every saint of God should be very uncomfortable in a dead church. <clears throat> because as we begin, no matter how you feel, no, ma- no matter how you came in, when you begin to worship and praise God and release your faith and your gratitude and your thankfulness, God responds. And there's one thing we know when God responds, anything can happen. Praise God. And I believe that tonight. And uh, so we're going to direct your attention to 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verses 1 through 5. Do you believe God's able? Do you believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him? Do you believe that you have the authority through the word of God to speak with power and authority through the name of Jesus Christ? Do you feel like you can be an overcomer through the word of God? Amen, I believe that. So let's go to 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Amen, verses 1 through 5. If you are there, say amen. Amen. Praise God, thank you. Amen. Very familiar portion of scripture, I would guess, with most of us, at least verse 4 is. But the songs have been, we've been singing tonight, just kind of uh, reaffirmed what we're going to preach about tonight. On September the 11th, we are, we are still grieving, if I might say, over what happened 20 years ago. And uh, been listening quite a bit today to people that have lost family members and friends that awful day. But we also know that what takes place in the natural is also taking place in the spiritual. Over the last 20 years, there have been many people taken off of the battlefield spiritually. A lot of enemy bombardment onto the spiritual battlefields. And tonight, just for a little bit, I want to direct your attention here and we're going to talk a little bit about it. Paul here is speaking of spiritual authority. Turn to your neighbor and say spiritual authority. (laughs) Now, I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence... Am I base or lowly among you, but being absent and bold towards you? But I I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think or intend to be bold against some which think of of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5 says, casting down imaginations or arguments and every high thing that is all itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Folks, 
there's a war going on. And I'm not talking about a war among the nations, though that exists. I'm talking about a spiritual war. And you and I have to be determined that we are not going to succumb to the enemy. But we are going to be overcomers through the Spirit of God. The one that strengthened us. Amen. Let's put our Bibles down. Let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you once again for your goodness, your mercy, your loving kindness that you have so graciously shown to us. We thank you for the opportunity that we have again to become to be in your house of worship. We thank you for the songs, the worship that has been conducted tonight because it has moved our soul. Lord, I pray that through the singing of of these songs that our hearts have been opened and our eyes have been opened and our ears have been opened to, uh, amen, see and hear and feel you in this place tonight because we know ultimately that, that you are the one that doeth the work. It is not us, but it is you because you are the one that has all power in heaven and earth. And I pray, God, tonight that you would once again move mightily in this place, amen, as we direct our attention to your word. Challenge us tonight in Jesus' wonderful name we pray and let everybody say amen. You may be seated. Let me say it again. There is a war going on. Amen. Not talking about a war among nations, though they exist, but a spiritual war. Amen. God against Satan. Been going on for a long time. Been going on a long time. Amen. How many felt like he's come against you in many ways? He's God. The enemy of our soul. Turn to your neighbor and say, he is your enemy. Amen. This fight of good versus evil has been going on for centuries. Amen. Many years. Amen. And so we have... Learn that, 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 that this fight, this warfare, amen, after a while you realize it's not something you can wage on your own because in your flesh you will lose. In your flesh you will be defeated. Amen. It takes you putting on the armor of God for you to be successful in this fight. Amen. So whether, we're, whether we, we want to acknowledge it or not, we are all involved in this war. And this war affects every person on the earth. Amen. It's truly a world war. We had our World War I. We've had our World War II. We've had all of our other skirmishes and wars in the world. Amen. But this is a world war that we are fighting. And Satan and his demonic forces have declared war on God and his church. I don't know if you've felt it or not. I don't know if you've realized it or not. I don't know if you've kind of, kind of acknowledged or understood, amen, that we are in this battle and there's no time for any of us to sit on the sidelines. There's no time for any of us to take a back seat, uh, amen, in this warfare and just think, well, you know what, <clears throat> I've had some time in here, let's let the young bucks do it. Well, amen, let me tell you this right now, a lot of the young bucks of the world need to see us as older saints of God, amen, really in the warfare and the battle. They need to learn, they need to be taught to realize how important it is to you and I to succeed in this battle. The weapons that he uses, the arsenal that he, that he has, amen, are many. And his fiery darts, as the Bible declares, are many. And they are seasoned, as we've talked about before, with poison. And we hear about them. It seems like every day, amen, one of his bombs, if I might say, or his fiery darts are exploding somewhere in the world. And many times not too far away from us. Amen. Let me, let me just name a few right now that we are very familiar with. Amen. We are familiar with murder because you can't go a day without hearing something on the news or, 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 or seeing it or, or, or knowing somebody close to you. Uh, amen. That has been uh, a, uh, 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 involved uh, uh, and, and, and has, 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 has heard about or seen or been affected by murder. 
Amen. We understand all the way back with Cain and Abel. Amen. When, uh, when Cain slew Abel out of anger, you got to understand this evening that, that you and I are facing this uh, in our world, in the natural, but, but more importantly, it's happening in the spiritual. We understand that when somebody closes their eyes for the last time on the, in this world uh, and takes their last breath in this world, that things immediately begin to change for them. But more importantly, we need to understand uh, that when that happens uh, in the spiritual, we're talking about eternal things. Amen. We have the fiery darts, uh, amen, of, of murder. We have the fiery darts, if I might say, of hate. Hate rules the world. You got families that are split apart, families that won't talk. Amen. Families that won't, won't uh, sit at the same dinner table anymore. Amen. Like they used to. Uh, they don't get together for Christmas. They don't get together for Thanksgiving. Uh, amen. Used to, it didn't matter what kind of politics you had. Uh, you were family. Used to, it didn't matter if you're going to get a shot. Uh, amen. For some kind of a pandemic or not, you were family. But there's things in the world uh, that are work, uh, amen, that are trying to destroy the family unit uh, and put in, instill in people the hatred uh, for one another. I'm here to tell you, we don't need hate. Uh, we need unification. Uh, we don't need hate. Uh, we need love. Uh, we don't need the hate of the world. Uh, we need the love of Jesus Christ. Come on, clap your hands and praise Him tonight. I, I, I want the world to be saved, but they're not going to drive my mind and my thought. They're not going to drive me away from the things of God. <clears throat> Come on. I'm still, I still believe in the Word of God. Do you? I still believe in the Word of God. I'm going to preach the Word of God. It tells me to be instant in season and out of season. I, I want to preach the Word of God. I want to live by the Word of God. I want to have faith in the Word of God. But there's a lot of things that we can preach in the Word that the world would say, no, 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 you can't say that. The Word is still the Word. They hated Jesus too. They crucified Him because of what He said. Don't, don't, don't bow down to the process of the world. Amen. You don't have to be ugly. You don't have to be, uh, get in their face. Uh, you don't have to be mean. Uh, you, don't need to have to, you don't need to be hateful. But you've got to be solid uh, in your faith uh, and your trust uh, in Jesus Christ. But he's always shooting those darts of hate. Oh, he loves discord. Amen, that, that fiery dart of discord. Uh, amen, he, he, he loves nothing best, better than for a dart to get into the church. Uh, amen, and begin to create discord. Uh, amen, he loves to do it to the family uh, and he's trying to do it to the church. Uh, amen, but who is greater? Greater is he that's in us, right? Than he that's in the world. He shoots that fiery dart, uh, amen, of child abuse. My God, uh, amen, kids around the world, uh, when they went through this pandemic and all the, all the, uh, uh, the, the news coming out from it uh, and the studies coming out from it, uh, uh, all the children, uh, amen, that because they didn't go to school where teachers could look after them and know if something was going on in their life, uh, and now they were put back in that environment where they had to stay in that environment, uh, amen, and now we got all kinds uh, of psychological problems Problems, uh, amen, in our babies of today, let alone in the adults. The devil's shooting it in there, amen, pornography and drugs uh, and a lying spirit uh, that's getting into people's lives today uh, and a spirit of slander that's getting in people's lives today. It's not the will of God. Come on, it's not the will of God. It's not the will of God that you and I live a promiscuous lifestyle. It's not the will of God for us to depend on alcohol and drugs and that kind of thing to kind of help our lives ebb along. Amen. He likes to shoot the dart of pride where we can get all puffed up with our pride and think that we are something else. 
Amen. I'm here to tell you, uh, amen, you ain't nothing. Uh, are you all a hunk of dirt, uh, amen, that God fashioned uh, out of the dust of the earth uh, and breathed into man the, the breath of life? Uh, and that's who we are. We are here because of the hand uh, of God. The fiery dart of rebellion, it shows up every time you turn around. You want to know why we got problems in our world today? Amen. Because we, we as a world, amen, have let our young people just kind of grow up running their own lives. We have taught them to rebel against authority. We have taught them to rebel against government, amen, against the household. We have taught them how to do these things. But a spirit of rebellion, amen, that's taken deep root in the heart and lives of people. Church, let me tell you something tonight. It does not belong in the church. It doesn't belong in your life. It doesn't belong in your family. It's just a tool of the enemy. It's one of his arrows in his quiver that he's trying to destroy people's life with. Rebellion. You ain't telling me what I'm going to do. You say, Pastor, you're getting a little riled up tonight. Well, yeah, I am a little riled up tonight. I'm paying attention to what's going on around us right now. And I'm telling you, if we're ever going to be a church that's on the move and a church that's full of revival, we have to be an open book before God and we got to let God strip everything out of us. Amen. That's not like Him. We got to let Him strip everything out of us. Amen. That will move us backwards and won't move us forward. Amen. We got to understand, amen, that God has got to be the authority in our lives and help us along the way. It's not time to kowtow. And let people just kind of run their own life spiritually? No, we got to get in the Word of God. What does the Word say to us? Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Hear me tonight. Turn to your neighbor right now and say, let the Lord be be what he wants to be in your life. There's the fiery dart of hypocrisy. Amen. Turn to your neighbor right now. Let's just play something right now. Turn to your neighbor and say, are you a hypocrite? (laughs) That's fun, isn't it? You know, they say you don't find hypocrites on a bar stool. You'll find all kinds of them in church. Pastor, you need to slow down a little bit. Hear me when I tell you this right now. We're in a fight for our lives. And if you want to make it to heaven, if I want to make it to heaven, i got to realize there's going to be a lot of things thrown at me, but I have to be true to the things of God. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to have a spirit of complacency that's in my life. I'm talking about the fiery darts that the enemy is going to throw at you. His war policy. You know what his war policy is? It's called scorched earth policy. You probably heard it before. He has launched an all out attack on the forces of good and all of humanity. And many people are being pummeled by the arsenal of hell. Many who are killed in this battle lie in the graveyards around the world. Many who are wounded by the Satan's darts lie in hospitals worldwide. Amen. And many, I add, it matters not how young or old you are. You can go into the nursing homes and you think, Brother Howard, you think that's where all the old folks are. But I've visited young people in the nursing homes that have cooked their brain with drugs. And then all they are is a shell of themselves. They, they, aren't, they, they aren't what they used to be, but because they succumb to the things of this world, it has cost them. And so they lay in those beds, wasting away at young ages. 
Come on, how many hear me tonight? Turn to your neighbor and say, hear the word of God. Amen, wounded by Satan. Amen, many of Satan's victims are bound, where? In jails and in prisons. And what they need more than anything, amen, is the presence of God that we feel in this place tonight. Amen, to come behind those prison doors. Amen, let them begin to feel the almighty God. Amen, as he moves, amen, into their jail cells. Amen, into their prisons. Amen, and begin to give them a little bit of hope that there is a God. that can still change their lives. Amen. But let me say, instead of being so negative tonight, I want you to know, amen, it's a battle. Everybody say there's a battle. Amen. There's two sides of this thing. Amen. you got the enemy, amen, that's shooting and trying to destroy as many people as he can. But there are the forces of God, the forces of God, that we must be on the counterattack. This is what I want to preach about tonight. Amen. We must sound the alarm. Amen. You got to get on the rooftop. Amen. You got to get on the mountaintop. Amen. You got to get up high and you got to begin to sound the alarm. Amen. We must unite. Amen. The forces. Amen. What could we do church if each and every one of us would become united in prayer? United in fasting. United in the word of God. What could God do and accomplish through us if we become united as a body? Amen. The last thing the devil wants is for you and I to prepare for this battle. Amen. It just doesn't happen. There's got to be preparation. Right? Come on, just look at your everyday life, the job you have, amen, the things you do. You understand, amen, that you're not where you're at just because it fell on your lap. Amen. There had to be preparation. You know, what, whatever it was, you had to learn. You had to gain knowledge. Amen. You had to understand. You had to gain understanding to do what you do. I'm here to tell you tonight, it's the same way in the kingdom of God, in the spiritual world. You and I have to understand that it's a process and we have to be determined that we're going to gain knowledge and understanding on how this warfare is to be fought. You say, Pastor, why is that so important? Well, I'll tell you why it is. Because I've got kids. I've got sons and a daughter. Amen. I've got three grandchildren. One of them riled up back there. Amen. And I think of them all the time. As I'm listening and I hear and I read what's going on in our world today. Come on, folks. Don't blind your eyes. You need to take it in. You need to let that stuff motivate you. Amen. And say, you know what? I need to reach somebody just like that before it's too late. You can ask my wife. You can ask my daughter. I'm always telling them, you know, hey, before you get in your car, look. Put your head, put your head on a swivel. Man, look around you. Don't just, just don't become oblivious to what's going on and just kind of think everything's going to go on. No, a, a mother and, and, and her one-year-old, uh, amen, was trying to put the groceries in a car and somebody come up and abducted them. Thank God they just took them to an ATM machine uh, to get some money out and let them go. But then at the same time, a teacher, a mother of two, goes out running, abducted, murdered. Somebody else goes on a rampage. Makes no difference where you are. Amen. Makes no difference what you got. When the mindset is that way, they're going to try to fulfill that. Up in Canada, a couple guys went on a stabbing spree. This world is full of evil. And the only way that we can overcome it is through the power of God. Amen. A God that can give hope to people. Because if you lose hope, you become unstabilized. So folks, we have to sound the alarm. We have to unite the forces. We must prepare for battle. See, the church, the body of Christ, amen. How many is a part of the church, the body of Christ? Are you? Come on. Are you happy about that tonight? 
The Bible says that we are to be clothed with the armor of God. Our loins are to be girt about with truth. We have the breastplate of righteousness. Our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We carry the shield of faith we have on our heads, the helmet of salvation. We carry the sword of the Spirit. We are constantly praying unto God who is our commander in chief. And the weapons of the church are the same weapons that, that were used by our forefathers. And it worked. Everybody shout, it worked. It worked. Amen. No, they're not modern weapons, but they are trustworthy. They have been proven. Sidebars like David and Goliath. David put on Saul's armor, but he hadn't proven it. And so he felt uncomfortable. But what he had had been proven. I'm telling you, there is no other. I'm going to tell you right now, amen, do, do, do read what you want to read. But see this right here, this book, amen, this has been proven. It has stood the test of time. They tried to get rid of it, but they have failed every time. Yeah, I'm really surprised. Honestly, I'm surprised. I, I am amazed that people today, because they get rid of stuff on our libraries that shouldn't even be there for our kids. God help us. Amen. Things that shouldn't be there for our kids. And yet, it's just like, well, we took these off, so I guess we need to take the Bible out. You see, what they don't realize is what they've been doing over many years. Amen. When they used to pray in school. Amen. When there was a spiritual guidance there. When your teachers were motivated and they had a, a kind of a religious background uh, and they believed in God and they could pray at school uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, somebody, some wise person got up and said, well, we don't need to be praying in school. Don't tell me. Don't scratch your head and wonder why the world's got all these problems. Uh, amen. When you begin to take God out of the equation you are taking out the only thing that can give anybody the hope that they need but pastor you don't understand we've got all these different things going on in the world today no, well don't take it up with me take it up with him because you know when it's all said and done they're going to try to shut our mouths when it's all said and done, they're going to try to restrict uh, what we can say and do. Uh, but I got news for them. Uh, they will never shut the mouth of God. And one day they will stand before him. They will stand as sure as I'm standing in shoe leather tonight. They will stand before him and have a given account. Is this okay tonight? If it was good enough for them, it's good enough for me. Not modern weapons, but they're trustworthy. They are proven. Amen. These weapons are, have been used against the forces of Satan. Amen. And they are tactically sound. Come on, somebody say praise the Lord. They are proven. You know, I'm one of these kind of guys that gets on YouTube, such a lot, and I like to watch these military stuff. With all the different planes and all the different uh, cannons, I'm, I'm getting my whatever and uh, and mortars, and I like to watch that stuff. And, and boy, when they come out with something new, we think it's new. They're far beyond that. Once you see it, they got stuff way out there somewhere. Amen. But here, let me tell you this, uh, and I, it just it just amazes me. Amen. The the the, the science behind these things uh, and what they put together. But but you know, when it's all said and done, even though I'm looking at that in awe, I still I still come back to the thing. I know a God. I know a God. I know a God. I know a God that can speak a, a word in a moment and all of that stuff would just become boom. See, this world's going to find out one of these days. They're all going to gather to the valley of Megiddo. 
They're going to get all their stuff and all their toys and all their tools and, and they're going to bring all their stuff. Amen. They're going to have the best aircraft and, and the tanks and the, and the, and the howitzers and, and all of these different things. And they're going to come and everybody's going to try. We're going to, and their blood's going to flow. Amen. But I'm going to tell you what, when it's all said and done, God's going to come back. Amen. I'm telling you, they will not be able to stand before God. No, they will not be able to stand before, don't you ever, don't you ever for a moment doubt that, uh, amen, they will not be able to stand before God. Why? Because he is the king of kings uh, and the Lord of lords. Amen, yes, we might have kings around the world and queens around the world, but we have the king of kings. The Lord of lords. I'm getting too excited tonight. So what, what, what spiritual weapons we have from the word of God, they've been proven. They are sound. <laughs> so let me, i got three of them tonight, just three. Hey Amen, let me talk about the first one. What is the first one? I've been waving it around tonight. It is, everybody say God's word. Hey Amen, I'm going I'm to say it again. I love this little scripture. It's thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. First base. If you don't get the word, second base ain't coming. Third base ain't coming. You're not going to get a home run. Why? Because you have to have the word. You got to know where it starts. You got to understand that it's going beyond what your natural ability is, is capable of doing. You need the word of God. Amen. Why? Because it's this word that's going to defeat Satan every time. Amen. Christ... Our commander, if I might say in chief, uh, amen, he used it to defeat the devil. Come on. Go to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Come on, help me out here tonight. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen, because he came, amen, after the baptism of Christ. He went into the wilderness. Amen. We know it as the temptation, right? Amen. But he used the word. Christ used the word to defeat the temptations of the devil. Every fiery dart that he threw him. So let me read in verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Has anybody been tempted of the devil? Amen. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights... He was afterwards hungry. Huh. Think about that. Jesus, 40 days, 40 nights, he was hungry. Verse 3. So in that situation, at that moment of vulnerability... Hunger will cause you to do a lot of things. And when the tempter came to him and said, If thou be the Son of God, he knew who he was. But if you are the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Come on, Jesus. You know you're the Son of God. But if you be the Son of God, you know you could speak to these, these stones right here and they could give you sustenance. They could become bread and you could eat from them. But what did Jesus say? It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He got that from Deuteronomy 8. 13. 8, 3. So then the devil taketh him up into a holy city and set them on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down for it is written. See, folks, don't fool yourself. He knows the word of God. It is written, he shall give angels charge concerning thee and in their hands they shall bear, bear thee up and let, lest, I, lest that in any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Come on now, Jesus. Hey Amen, I know it's a little, but, but you, just, you just cast yourself off and the angels will, will keep you from hitting the ground. But what did Jesus do? He said, again, it is written. 
Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Don't test him. <laughs> Again, the devil taketh him up into exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kings of the world and the glory of them and said, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Now, there's a lot wrapped up in that right there if you want to get into that a little bit right there. Amen. It kind of lets you know who runs what. But he knew the authority was not in him. He knew it was in Jesus. And Jesus said this last time, he, did, he just didn't say it was written. He said, get the hints. Get the hints, Satan. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. <laughs> now notice here, he stopped. He said, get the hints, Satan. For it is written. Verse 11, then the devil, all right, the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. Let me stop and tell you once again, it's the word of God. When you get in the word of God, you realize who really has the authority. And it's not the enemy that comes knocking on your door. It's not the devil that comes and challenges you, uh, amen, through the cares of life and the different various things uh, that he comes against you, uh, amen. It's not, it's the authority is not in uh, this world, uh, amen. It's not in them, uh, amen. It's all in him. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Let's clap our hands and praise him. The devil hates the word of God. Why? Because the word of God is proven. The word of God cannot be destroyed. The word of God never becomes obsolete. The word of God will destroy the advances of the enemy. And when the devil comes at you with his fiery darts of hell, you got to reach for the word of God. Amen. Begin to declare, it is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. Why should I do that? Why should I say that? Amen. Because it scares the enemy to death. In fact, James, James 2.19 says, that Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe. And they tremble. They know where the authority is. Come on, just ask them. Read the word of God. The word of God will tell you. The demoniac of the Gadarenes. Nobody could bind him up. Nobody could keep him. He had run the tombs. He had howl. Amen. They couldn't keep him chained up. Amen. He had a legion of devils in him. But when Jesus came along and he recognized who he was, he went and fell down at him. Amen. And why have you come to torment me before my time? And then he begins to bargain with the, with, uh, with the Lord. And finally he says, well, there's some swine over there. Why don't you let me go into the swine? And he said, go. And they went into the swine and the swine red off the cliff amid the water and drowned. Glory. Folks, I'm going to tell you right now, understand this, it's all in the Word of God. If you read the Word of God, you'll understand that, that when, when it says greater is he that's in you, uh, amen, I love that scripture too, greater is he that's in you uh, than he that's in the world. No, you don't learn that from anybody. You learn that from an experience with him. You learn that from the Word of God. I challenge you tonight. It's the word. It's the word. Because when the word of God is used, it scatters the demons of hell. Satan's forces tremble when the word of God is spoken in faith. Amen. It's the force of Satan. They are no match for this weapon, the word of God. It is versatile enough, amen, to be carried by every soldier of God. Amen. You can carry it wherever you go. You can hide it in your heart. You can remember it in your mind so that any occasion the word can be there to defend you. Every soldier has got to be trained in its usage. Amen. Every soldier has got to understand it's got to be taken to the front lines. It's got to be in the valleys as well as the mountaintops. Amen. Whatever terrain it is, it's the word of God that you take with you into battle. Amen. You've got to use it as a child of God. As a soldier of the kingdom of God, you must use it. Why? Because it will work for you. The second spiritual weapon the church has is the blood of Jesus Christ what can wash away my sins ain't nothing but the blood 
Nothing, nothing. The world has nothing that can wash away your sins. It's, the, it's, it's Jesus Christ. It's the blood of him. Amen. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Now, this is kind of an unusual uh, weapon. It was first introduced where? At Calvary. Amen. The early church used it. it. Its effects on the enemy is tremendous. The elements that makes up, amen, is plentiful. And the cross has an endless supply. And when the bomb, amen, if I might say, is dropped on the forces of Satan, it splatters instantly. It is the power, amen, of the church. It's the power of the blood. That blood is what is what covers a multitude of sins. It's that blood that when it begins to go off, amen, the enemy runs. It cannot stand against it. It cannot, it cannot be around it. Amen. It, can't, it, can't, it has no authority over it because when the blood is applied, the enemy loses its control. Over an individual. Satan can't stand to see it. Can't stand to touch it. He doesn't want to smell it. When it's used, it dulls his senses. When it's applied, it works on his nervous system. It drives him insane. So when the enemy comes against you through the word of God let the blood be applied by the blood of Jesus Christ by the authority of his name. You got to go into battle understanding amen that he will work for you. Amen. Let me hurry on. I gotta finish this up. What's 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 the, the third thing that's important for you to use? Well, we got the word. We have the blood. And we've got the name. <laughs> that name that's above every name. Amen. It's that name. When you speak the name of Jesus. It's more powerful than anything because you speak it. When you've got the word, when you've got the blood applied to your life, amen, when you've been filled with his spirit, amen, he gives you the authority to use his name. And when the enemy comes against you and you say, in the name of Jesus, No, nah, you can't be like one of the seven sons of Siva and begin to talk to him and say, hey, you know, in the name of, uh, of, of Jesus whom Paul preacheth uh, and begin to try to cast out devils. No, nah, because they'll say, hey, we know Paul, we know Jesus, but who are you? That's why you've got to get down deep and get in the name. And when you properly use it in faith, it will evict the forces of the enemy. Amen. It will destroy them. They'll be running from their foxholes. Amen. When you drop, when you drop it in on them, amen, they'll begin to run behind, in, behind the lines. Amen. They won't stand out on the front lines. It will shake their foundations. It will rattle the quarters of hell. Amen. It will surround the enemy forces. It will bind them and make them helpless. Amen. And when you put it and place it out there in the field, amen, and put it in your every war bag that you got, make sure you understand Stand that it will work. And when Satan comes at you and us, amen, with his evil forces, amen, begin to declare the name of Jesus. Folks, its results are tremendous. It's awesome. Amen. It's like a Gatling gun. It's like that, uh, it's like that Gatling gun they have on the warthog. Uh, is that called Warthog, that A-10 or whatever they call it? And that thing, it's amazing. Hey, man, let me tell you, it's like that, man. When you get the word of God out, that's, about what, that's what he hears. He hears, and then, it will work. Everybody shout, it will work. 
Amen. So you say, well, pastor, I'm closing. So whoever's going to play, come on up. Hey, man, I'm, 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 I'm in this, man. I mean, it's red alert right now. It is red alert. I mean, uh, when, when you're sitting here tonight, you have to understand, uh, hey, man, I mean, there's a declaration going out, hey, amen, that we need to get to our battle stations uh, and we need to be ready to fight. Why? Because we see the enemies on the horizon. Uh, he's advancing with full force. Uh, hey amen. This is a war. This is a war. This is a war. My Lord, we've got too many backslidden, backslidden kids and family members. Uh, hey amen. We don't need to be sitting on the sideline. We need to be praying the prayer of faith. Hey amen. We need to be calling out their name uh, and pleading the blood over their lives. Why? Because this world's coming to an end. Get your battle gear on. Amen. Reach for your weapon, the Word of God. Amen. It's a fight to the finish. You got to understand it. We're in the we're in the end time. We're getting ready to we're 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 winding this thing up, and we got to be willing to fight all the way through the end. You'll never finish the course unless you fight the good fight of faith. stand together folks we can win if we're determined to win yeah but pastor you know we've been talking about this stuff for a long time and uh, it's just like the same old same old well let me stop and tell you something tonight tonight before we leave this place why don't you be determined just for a moment to take a little time out and pray and seek the face of God and say, God, I pledge to you, I commit to you, I promise you, amen, that, that your word has, in, it has affected me tonight to the point that when I leave this place, I'm going to be getting in your word. I'm going to be speaking your name. I'm going to, I'm going to, that blood's going to be applied not just to my life, amen, but anybody else that I can teach a Bible study to or invite to the house of God, I want them to know that there is hope. There is hope. Do you believe that tonight? We open these altars up tonight. Amen. Would you come and find a place to pray for a moment as they sing? Amen. And just begin to pour your heart out to God. This is serious business, folks. If you, do, if you don't want to take it serious, uh, amen, I, I don't know what else to say. But, 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 but we all, myself included, uh, amen, we need to get a hold of God. Let God be real in us. Let Him move on us. Uh, amen. And be effective in our lives. God wants to do something great through you. You might as well say tonight's the night. I'm going to let him move in my life. That's it. Come on, raise your, raise your voices all over the place. Begin to talk to the Lord. Hallelujah. Warfare tonight. It's a warfare tonight. It's not the will of God we leave the same way as we came. It's not the will of God we leave the same way as we came. This is how I fight my battles. 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 